We tell stories at Milwaukee PBS. Here's one you may have missed. It was June 1939 when another local church building was officially dedicated. Almost 80 years later, St. Rita of Kasha Church, now part of Milwaukee's Three Holy Women Parish, is undergoing a dramatic change of its own after seeing their school close in the late 80s. It's a change that impacts a neighborhood, longtime parishioners, and the city's Italian immigrants. Who better to tell this story than the people who built this church out of faith, hope, and a whole lot of love? Well, this place is very special. I was born and raised actually across the street from the church. We felt a warmth here, and so we started attending. This is where I grew up. And she went to grade school here, all eight grades. And her name is Rita. And her name is Rita. <laughs> she says they named the church after her. This has become such a big part of our lives over the last 29 years. If you ever want to just make a lot of noise and visit with people, this is the place to be. Good morning. Because I think sacred space, sanctuary in a neighborhood lifts the tide of the neighborhood. Good morning. Thank you. How are you doing, Jim? How are you doing there? Good. Okay. Technically, I was here before the church was. We grew up here on the east side, actually, right here on Cass Street. Good morning, Miss Betty. Sometimes I'll come in here late at night or after a long day, and you can just feel, you know. Religion is, is palpable, and I just come in here and I, I feel holiness, and I feel, I feel peace. Originally, the, most of the Italian people were Our Lady of Pompeii, but as it kept getting bigger and bigger, that's when we decided to build a, a church up here. And originally this was a, considered a mission church, which was part of Pompeii. So then us Eastsiders that were born in, the, in this area, we developed uh, St. Rita's Church. I've been a parishioner of St. Rita's Church in the parish since 1958, when I was eight years old and we emigrated from Sicily with my family. I think it represents the immigrant story in a very powerful way, especially the Sicilian immigrant story. We came from a small town, Porticello was my hometown, and my mother's was Santalia. The only church I knew in the United States was St. Rita. Everything centered around the church. This is a celebration of St. Rita's and Pompeii, of the Sicilian American, the Italian American community, but multiplied by the Polish, St. Edwards, the Irish, Holy Rosary, give me your tired, your hungry, your masses, and you'll find a home. Our whole life really did center around this church because we also found many of our paisanos, if you want to say. Our family members were all here. We're all immigrants here. I think it makes us to think seriously about some of the issues we're facing now. Once we came to St. Rita's, there were the sisters who spoke our language, there were the priests. We had, uh, you know, what really was very important to us, the saints, uh, our Lord and everything. So we operate here out of, again, getting, not out of fear, but out of love. And when I was here on the east side beginning 19 years ago, it was three separate parishes, two of which in the original plans were supposed to be closed. And um, I remember back then I thought, I don't know if that's really good for a neighborhood. It's always been a family uh, unit. Well, I think we're huggers and kissers. <laughs> and I think uh, it's easy for us to greet other people. Once you come in the doors, I feel like it's hard to leave. When we see each other, friends and family, it isn't just shake hands or say hello, it's always grab them and hug them. Uh, we're Irish, uh, so I think it's fabulous um, and probably also just speaks to the fact that you don't have to, have to be, you know, fit a certain narrow category to be welcome here. You feel uh, a sense of family when you come here and you come home. We've now since moved out to Union Grove, but every time we come back here, it's almost as if you're home. I think it's the warmest community of people uh, I've ever met. Uh, we are family. We tried it and knew instantly that uh, this was a place that felt like home. Um, and actually the kids, after that first Mass, we walked out and the kids said that was some good church. Uh, 
I told the folks that that we'll make a decision about buildings based when we need to make the decision, not because we have to make a decision. I prayed to St. Rita because that which was supposed to be torn down is being torn down, but it's in, prop but in its proper time. Not, not back then, but now. Because now we have a vision of where the next step of the road will take us. This is gonna be called St. Rita's Square, and it's gonna be called St. Rita's Church. It's gonna be a senior development. We're gonna really make it a living space, but we wanna make a connection. The church will be separate. So we wanna honor both traditions. And you can even see in the architecture of the new church, you know, the outside might be with a bell tower and with a little, little pink cue, but all of the St. Rita stuff is going to be on the inside. And some, because some of the St. Rita stuff is also historically Pompeii stuff. The statue that's on the altar now is a statue of St. Rita. It's our oldest and most precious statue because it's from Pompeii. You know, if there's something that catches me, it's the angel that sits at the top of the building. Um, you know, the, the history behind that, how that's that at the perch of Our Lady of Pompeii and then came here and now we'll be taken down and then sit at the perch of the new building. That, that angel is sort of a, a trademark per se. It's like when a family home is sold, when your parents have to sell their house or you know something like that and move maybe to a retirement home. There's a sadness but it's all about the relationships and the people and the memories. If these walls could talk, what would they say? Perhaps they would say, hey, I remember you. You sat in the third pew every single Sunday. Right side, second pew. I always sit in the same spot. It's about the second or third pew. We've always sat there. And it's my view of Margaret when she's serving. Did you walk down this aisle on your wedding day? Got married here. Due to the fact that I was born across the street, I went to school here. I was baptized here. I was in the first communion class. I have friends here from my kindergarten class. The first confirmation class and the first graduation class in 45, 1945. Did your children receive the sacraments here? All my grandparents are out of town, so they became my step in grandparents and aunts and uncles. Like they came to my first communions. Like I don't know any other place. Um, I'm excited for the new church. I think it's great that it's bringing in a little bit of the old history with um, the newer generation as well. And you can establish how things were back with the Lady of Pompeii Church, but then also make it modern for people like me. We're not Italian, but... I got drafted to work on the spaghetti dinners early, early on, so I've been doing that for almost the whole time. I've been an altar server here for four years. Every Sunday I see everyone's faces, and it's feels just like another home to me here. It's just such a special place and I can't go without a goodbye. This is a bittersweet day as we move forward. This is the day God has given us. We rejoice and are glad. There were times I was almost teary. The songs were beautiful. The message from Father Tim was beautiful. Our ancestors, who be it in the little pink church or in the churches on the south side, the north side, Kenosha, Racine, anywhere, Jesus says, just follow me and I'll make things work. Produce abundantly. I had mixed feelings. Uh, I was sad because of all the years that I've been here. But yet, when Father Tim told us that we might be building a new church. I, I, was, I was happy about it, sad and happy. The overwhelming sense was gratitude. That was the linchpin of my, my existence here. I'm so grateful. We stand on the shoulders of so many people who have gone before us and so many people even now. There have been a lot of people. And so I, when I was walking through, I was grateful. I was joyful. I was emotional. I have great gratitude for the people before us and uh, a pride in all that we've done, we've survived. God willing, I'll be here when, when we open up the new church. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, we gather today to mark the closing of our beloved St. Rita Church. Let us lift up our voices in praise and song. With countless gifts of love. The wonder of Catholicism is not just a Sunday morning reality, it's a lifelong reality that we let the power of that spirit help us through prayer. So we come to a moment now, because of shifting demographics, kind of a sense of, 
uh, of the church that now St. Rita has fulfilled her responsibility at this moment. And so there's a need for transformation, a need basically for a change. Because when this space was made, Samuel Cardinal Stritch, who was then the Archbishop of Milwaukee, Archbishop Stritch, consecrated this space. So there was a set ritual in which you went to various places in the church and put oil, holy oil on, like on the walls, consecrated the altar, consecrated the ambo. These objects that are material, that are concrete, contain within themselves a spiritual reflection. We believe that, that there's a change in the uh, being of those things, because once you bless them, they become different in our eyes, but we also believe in reality. Let us remember the times we have gathered for the sacred banquet. Now that we're gonna do something different here, we ask an archbishop to come and we ask him to, to kind of say, okay, these are no longer blessed, consecrated, deconsecrated. So although we do a deconsecration of this moment in this building, it will once again emerge and rise anew like we talk in terms of the resurrection. For Christ will live again here on this territory. Let us remember the baptism celebrated here, almighty, eternal God. We'll have deconsecrated the altar, the baptismal font, the pews, the ambo, and then we'll have benediction. St. Rita will always be a community that tells us that you take the command that God gives you to love one another. And then the Archbishop will walk out with the Eucharist, will put out the tabernacle lamp, and then this is no longer a church. But St. Rita will always remain St. Rita. She'll remain St. Rita because she was the doorway for people coming into the church. Arrivederci, not goodbye, until we meet again. God bless you all. And because of St. Rita, this place, this sacred place, will never be lost. Watch 1036 on Milwaukee PBS and watch online at milwaukeepbs.org.